so are known to be present in almost all the weathers okay they can survive in extreme conditions also okay so we are going to talk about the microorganisms okay in the above figure you see these are microorganisms which i have taken the two figures here are of microorganisms Okay. Some micro organisms. Now, first, let's name the chapter which we are discussing. That is microorganisms, friend and foe. Okay. The name of the chapter is. microorganisms okay okay friend and foe what does foe mean here f o e a uh, friend it's just opposite of friend something oh, that is harm to you it means evil yes. okay this evil okay so these both these terms are being associated with the microbes here with the microorganisms here so you see in nature there are some microorganisms which are helpful to us that are called friend that are of friend, friendly nature while most of the organ, uh, most of the microorganisms are of evil nature that we call as foe so that are the leading cause of so many deaths okay, okay. so people have bacterial infection people have infection from virus okay so basically all, almost all the deaths that is uh, that is occurring in the world it is due to infection from viruses and bacteria yes, now we will also have a look at in what ways they are helpful for humans how they are friends of humans and how they are evil for the human health okay how they act as foe for humans okay like how they spread the diseases here so the figures here i have taken first one is of a virus another one is of a bacteria so begin to begin with the definition of this microorganism how do you define the microorganisms uh, invisible things that only use microscope they don't use microscopes we are the one who use microscope oh yes so you see many living organisms like you see here this virus and bacteria they are present in soil water and air around us okay and some of these organisms are so small that we cannot see them with our naked eyes okay and those organisms are simply called microorganisms okay so we see that there are so many living organisms in soil water and air around us and some of them are so tiny that they cannot be seen our seen by our naked eyes some of them so tiny that they cannot be seen by naked organisms they cannot be seen by our naked eyes yes, okay so we take help of special tools so have a look at this tool given here that is called what that is a microscope here yes, okay so that they cannot be seen by our naked eyes and we take help of special tools called microscopes special machines called microscopes 
Okay. So that is the definition of microorganisms here. Okay. <coughs> now, further, uh, uh, if you were to talk about the content of the chapter, which we are, which we will be covering in this, the first thing we will be discussing about major groups of microorganisms. So you see, these microorganisms are not all of same kind. They are of, of different kinds. Okay, depending upon their size, depending upon their shape, depending upon the habitat in which they are found, they are divided into different categories. Okay, Ahmed. Yes, so we will discuss that, and we will also be discussing about some of the fungus and algae. Okay, so you must have seen bread mold. Okay, bread yes, catching fungus, and you must have seen algal bloom on water bodies. So there's a green layer of some plants that covers the water bodies so that are called algae. We will discuss that and we will have a look at useful and some of the harmful microorganisms. Okay. Like you, so, like you see, curd, the curd which we eat, it is basically made by the help of a very helpful bacteria. Do you know the name of that bacteria, which has a role to play in the formation of curd? C U R D curd, that curd. Um, no, sir. Okay, that is called dahi in Hindi. Now, Dehi. then we will see disease causing microorganisms in humans. Okay, which are the most common microorganisms that causes different types of disease in humans? Okay. And okay. what are the carriers of these diseases? Like disease can spread from a healthy uh, from an infected person to a healthy person like if there's someone in the room and if he sneezes, sneezes continuously there are high uh, there are high chances that the healthy person sitting in that room may get infected he may also count uh, he may also also get infected with the disease so that is house fly and mosquitoes agents of disease these are basically agents of disease because they help to spread the disease from one person to another person. Okay. Then another thing is that disease causing microorganisms in plants and in animals and plants. What you see, certain plants also gets infected by some microorganisms and they die eventually. Okay. So we will see that also. And what are the disease? causing microorganisms in certain animals like in the case of dogs okay dogs mainly die of rabies virus you know this dogs die of rabies virus dogs no. rabbits okay and yeah. cats right yes sir i know about so, cats but i know about dogs yeah they also die of rabies virus okay so if some if some healthy person gets bitten by a dog, there are high chances that if the dog was infected from rabies virus, that rabies virus can transfer from his body to the healthy person who got bitten by him. Yes. Okay. Yes. So next thing we will be discussing is the food poisoning. Okay. How bacteria leads to food poisoning and how we need to preserve our food from contamination. Okay. From contamination from bacteria and virus. And the last important thing is nitrogen fixation and nitrogen cycle. Remember in the previous chapter, we talked about the leguminous plants. Yes, Ahmed. Nitrogen fixation, nitrogen fixation. Something should be clicking in your mind here. Remember anything which we discussed in the first chapter about nitrogen fixation? Yes, Ahmed. In crop production and management, we talked about how the nutrients of the soil gets replenished. Okay. Yes, Ahmed, are you there? Yes, Ahmed, can you listen to me? Yes, Ahmed. Okay. 
I was saying that in the previous chapter we talked about nitrogen fixation. It's nitrogen, sir. Yeah. What yes, do you mean by that? Uh, so we mean by uh, nitrogen in plants, I believe, or look, we talked about certain plants. We talked about leguminous plants. Leguminous. Remember, yes. leguminous plants. Okay, so in the roots of leguminous plants, their leaves are very special bacteria that is called rhizobium bacteria. Okay, that is a rhizobium bacteria. What this rhizobium bacteria does? What does it do? I have told you this multiple times in the previous class. You see, what this bacteria does? It basically fixes the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. Okay, and from that soil, when we irrigate the land, the uh, nitrogen fixed into the soil mixes with the water. That is, it gets into converted into soluble form. And then it is taken up by the roots of the plants. Okay, so that is what happens there. So that is simply called nitrogen fixation. Okay, you see, the nitrogen from the atmosphere is being fixed into the soil. Okay, and there's one more thing that is called nitrogen cycle that we will also discuss in the chapter. Okay, okay. So shall we begin then? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so you see, so anxiety chapter begins here. Okay. We will be especially discuss. Uh, we will especially discuss the activities given in the anxiety chapter. Okay, because the activities that are given in your anxiety textbook are very good. Okay, so that's why I ha I have attached the chapter here. So read activity two point one here. What does it say? Is it visible or shall I zoom it? Uh, it, it I, can, I can do it, sir. I can do it. So, okay. collect the moist soil from the field in the in a beaker and add water to it. After the soil particles have settled down, observe a drop of water from the beaker under a microscope. What do you see? Uh, bacteria? Bacteria that is obvious. We will see so many bacteria living in that water. Okay, now see activity two point two. Activity two point two. Take a few drops of water from a pond, spread on a glass slide, and observe through a microscope. It again bacteria. That is again bacteria. Okay, so in activity two point two, you saw both of them contain basically bacteria. Okay, so from this observation, what do you conclude that soils are full of tiny organisms? Okay, and you see it says that not all of them falls in the category of microbes. Yes, sir. Okay, so these microbes or microbes, uh, these microorganisms, another name for microorganism is microbes, are so small in size that they cannot be seen with the unaided eye. Unaided eye means basically without the use of any tools. Okay. Now okay. uh, some of them are fungus that grows on bread. Okay, and fungus which grows on bread that can simply be observed via a magnifying glass. Okay. Okay. So the first thing which we are going to discuss about is the major groups of microorganisms. That right? is the bacteria, viruses, and protozoa. Okay, that is the major group of microorganisms, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's name these sections for convenience. Okay, that is A, B. C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay. So we are discussing A yes. here. Okay. So that is major groups of microorganisms. Okay. 
Okay. Has this chapter been started in your school or not? It sir, it already has been finished. It has already been finished. Okay, so new chapter is going on in your school. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So new chapter is going on in your school. So we need to hurry up. Okay. So you see, microorganisms are basically classified into five groups. Okay, and these groups are what? They are bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi, and algae. Okay. Okay. So you see microorganisms. Are bacteria, fungi, under protozoa, algae, viruses. Yeah, very good. They are bacteria, algae, fungi, and fungi, and, and protozoa. Protozoa. One more is there. That virus. is viruses. That is the viruses. Okay. Okay. Now, if we were to talk about the uh, uh, the cells of the microorganisms, you will see that microorganisms can either be unicellular or they can be multicellular also. Okay. Unicellular. They can be unicellular or multicellular also. Okay. So note mm -hmm. this thing also. We can actually discuss this, write this here that yeah, note microorganisms can be unicellular, that is made up of one cell and multicellular. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, as you see, we have classified them under five groups and we will discuss each of these groups in detail. Okay. So let's first start with bacteria. Okay. In the chapter, it has a start with virus, but let's start discussing about bac bacteria first. Okay. No. Are bacteria single cell or multicellular? Ahmed, are they single cell or multicellular? If you were to define bacteria, since you have already studied the chapter, I'm guessing you must be having some idea regarding each topic. What do you understand by bacteria? And are they multicellular or unicellular? Uh, yes, sir. According are to they... you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are, but yeah. I'm... I guess there's some network issue with your connection. Yeah, yes, sir. It is. Yeah. Okay. So I will read. Uh, I will write them. I will write it, and you basically read that. Okay. So I say that bacteria are very very small. Small one celled microorganisms, one cell microorganisms. Okay, and which have cell walls. Okay, which have cell walls. And remember, uh, we earlier talked about nucleus and other structures of the cell. Okay, you know about this structure of a cell? Yes, sir, I, I do. Yeah, it's very like good. A... It has got a cell wall. Okay. And inside the cell wall also, it has got another layer that is called cell membrane. Yes, sir. And in the middle or in some cells, it in the sideways it is located. Uh, the, in sideways, there is a structure located that is called nucleus. It is a condensed mass called nucleus. Okay, so in bacteria, you will see that 
uh, they have cell walls, but they do not have an organized nucleus and other structures. Organized structure basically means that it has got a definite shape. You, the structure of the nucleus will be, it, if it is organized, it means that the structure will be clearly visible. You can easily identify that. But since the bacteria have got a nucleus, which is not properly visible. So we see that it does not have an organized nucleus. Okay, Ahmed. Yes, yes. Which have cell wall and it's not have an organized nucleus. Okay, sir. Now, see the figures here. The two figures given here. These are all figures of bacteria here. Okay. These are figures okay. of bacteria here. And you see, one more interesting thing is that after bacteria, we're going to discuss about uh, viruses. In comparison to virus, you will see that bacteria are usually larger than virus. Okay. They are larger okay. than virus in size. Okay, and okay. unlike virus, bacteria feeds, moves, and respires as well as reproduce on their own. So we will come to that also. But I'm saying that you see, you have got medicines for what? You have got medicines for bacteria, but you yes, don't sir. have got medicines. So many medicines for viruses. Okay, yes. because the spread of bacteria can be controlled but it is very difficult to control the spread of virus because you see virus does not have the virus does not perform its own functions it does not reproduce on its own it does not get its own nutrition virus basically feeds on host body okay you can say that it is of parasitic nature okay so when the virus is outside when it is in the environment it is in the air when basically it is not um, present on a living organism, it is dead. Once it enters a living organism, it is starts to take nutrition from that living organism and then it becomes alive. So if someone asks you, which organism is the connecting li uh, link between dead and alive? If someone, someone asks you, which is the connecting link between death and life? Then your answer has to be, Yes, sir. My am I audible properly? Can you listen me? Yes, sir. My but my connection goes out. So whenever you talk, uh, it gets like it. It like goes very low. Your voice goes low when the main thing you're explaining, sir. I can't. I couldn't hear it very well. Okay, I guess there's a there's again network issue with your connection. Okay, do one thing, um, mute yourself or uh, try to join again. Then, yes, Ahmed. See yes, if it sir. works. Okay. Okay.
ਮੇਰੇ ਸਹਿਮਤ ਯਾ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਵਰ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਬੈਕਟੀਰੀਆ ਓਕੇ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਹੀਅਰ ਮੀ ਨਾਓ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰਲੀ ਯਸ ਐਮ ਐਸ ਐਮ ਆਈ ਆਡੀਬਲ ਨਾਓ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰਲੀ ਯਾ ਯਸ ਸਰ ਯਾ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਲਿਸਨ ਮੀ ਨਾਓ ਰਾਈਟ ਯਸ ਸਰ ਓਕੇ so now next thing is that bacteria are found almost everywhere in large numbers okay so bacteria are found in large number okay in large numbers in soil water and where and in air okay and one more thing is that bacteria are larger than viruses in size bacteria are larger, larger than viruses in than size viruses. okay they are larger than viruses okay and based on their shape bacteria can be further classified into three groups like some bacteria have got dif- distinct shape from another one okay some might be of a spherical shape some will look of red shape and some will look like a spiral bacteria okay and this you will see the first figure that is of a rod shape bacteria okay this is a rod shape bacteria okay the other two bacteria their figure i will attach and show you, uh, show them to you in the next class okay so bacteria okay are of different shapes and they are namely spiral bacteria spiral shape bacteria and okay. you have rod shape bacteria okay and this one more which one is that that is the we have discussed spiral this rod and this one more is spherical shape okay spherical, spherical shape bacteria okay so a uh, spiral shape bacteria will look something like this a rod shape bacteria will have shape like this okay and a spherical shape bacteria will basically have a circular shape like this okay <clears throat> now have a look at some of the disease caused by the bacteria some of the common disease which is spread by bacteria so diseases caused by bacteria are what can you name some of them yes amit can you name some of the diseases caused by bacteria or just give me example of two most common bacteria found in our surrounding uh rod shape bacteria and spiral no, shape no i'm not asking about shape uh, uh i'm not asking about the shape of the bacteria i'm asking about the name of the bacteria okay like you have got rhizobium bacteria you have got uh, lactobacillus bacteria you see these are the most common bacteria found in our nature <clears throat> so you will say that common bacteria are one is the rhizobium bacteria another one is the <coughs> lactobacillus okay and this rhizobium bacteria has got a role to play in nitrogen fixation okay and this lactobacillus bacteria it helps in formation of curd so it is related to curd formation remember this okay, thing sir. now we were talking about diseases spread by the bacteria so some of the most common disease is spread by bacteria are what they are cholera okay they are tuberculosis they are what tuberculosis one more is there diphtheria okay or the cough you see cough or even the food poisoning when the food gets spoiled when it is contaminated by food that is called food poisoning so all these diseases are mold. spread by bacteria yeah mold that is also case of of food poisoning okay 
now we have discussed bacteria these are the yes. things which you need to know about the bacteria now next in line we have got viruses okay after bacteria let's talk about the viruses no what do you know about viruses we know uh, viruses are really dangerous and okay look viruses are the smallest microorganisms which can develop only inside the cells of the host organism what did i say that viruses are the smallest microorganism so note one thing here they are the smallest microorganisms which can develop where which can develop only in the cells of the host organisms meaning they can reproduce in the cells of the host organism only so meaning that in nature they are not found in very abundant amount in our in our surrounding in soil or in air but once they enters the body of the living organism or the uh, host organism they starts to multiply there right amit they start to reproduce there they start to gain nutrition from the host organism and they start to increase their numbers so you you need to say that viruses are the smallest microorganisms the smallest microorganisms which can develop where by develop i mean grow okay by by develop when i say develop it basically means to its growth its reproduction okay which can develop only inside okay. the cells of the host organism small organism yeah yes cells of the host organism okay so host organism let's say this is a human body here okay so once a virus enters the body of this human it will basically enter to the cells of uh, in in it will basically enter the cell of the human body and there will start to reproduce okay so that's how viruses spreads okay now what okay. other uh, thing is that it is uh, just mention one thing here that they are the smallest microorganism that is the important fact about it okay and in nature when they are sure. found in nature they do not show any characteristics of a living organism okay they will appear to be dead they will not show any motion okay and none of the metabolic activities can be observed in their bodies like metabolic activities if you observe cells of a living organism you will see that there are various functions ongoing inside that cell okay right if if a cell of a living organism observe that there is certain things going inside that cell some materials will be passing across the boundary of that cell okay blood will bring this is let's say blood nerve this is a nerve we okay, carrying blood so this blood will bring oxygen to this cell it will take out carbon dioxide from this cell it will basically bring food for this cell okay so there is movement of food particles and other waste materials from this cell to its surrounding well if you observe this uh, if you observe a virus you will see that nothing is happening there no metabolic activity and no sign of life can be observed there so what i say that viruses do not show most of the characteristics of living organisms viruses show characteristics of a living organism okay and they can reproduce and multiply only inside the cells of other organisms okay they can reproduce and multiply only in the cells of other organisms so are they not parasitic in nature 
ਯਾ ਸਹਿਮਤ ਅ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਆ ਪੈਰਾਸਾਈਟਿਕ ਇਨ ਨੇਚਰ ਦੇ ਆ ਰਾਈਟ ओके सो वन मोर थिंग व्हिच वी नो ऑलरेडी अबाउट द वायरस दैट व्हेन दे आर आउटसाइड द लिविंग सेल्स दे बिहेव एज नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स व्हेन दे आर आउटसाइड द लिविंग सेल्स दे बिहेव एज नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स बट एज़ सून एज़ दोस वायरस एंटर्स द लिविंग सेल्स ऑफ अदर ऑर्गेनिजम्स दे स्टार्ट बिहेविंग एज लिविंग थिंग्स दे स्टार्ट टू परफॉर्म ऑल द फंक्शंस ऑफ अ लिविंग बीइंग ओके दे स्टार्ट टू reproduce they start to digest their food they start to excrete waste material so we say that uh, they law uh, they lie on a boundary between dead and alive okay okay so we say that they lie on the boundary of the dead and living things of the dead and living things and they are basically agents of disease they are disease carriers they are responsible for a wide variety of disease in humans animals and other plants and various plants okay what are the common examples of disease spread by viruses can you name some of them yes sir what are the common disease spread by virus um common disease by virus yeah is is what are some examples of disease caused by viruses yes sir um what about common cold common cold is cold. also spread by virus cold is by right or oh. influenza yeah, uh, yes that is also and... called flu right yes okay so earlier there was a disease wide spread in parts of india that was called polio okay so polio drops were basically given to babies under 1 uh, years of age okay so to smaller babies polio drops were given to babies so polio was also spread by virus okay chicken pox and small pox plague? they are also yes ahmed so is plague a virus common common plague yeah they are also uh, they are also spread by viruses okay and if we were to talk about i was talking about chicken pox and small pox chicken pox and yes. small pox small pox these are also spread by different types of viruses okay now there are some other types of viruses also like hiv virus the full form is humano immune virus okay that is responsible for causing aids in humans okay what it okay yes, sir. now we have discussed okay. about bacteria and viruses now next in line let's talk about protozoans algae okay, okay. Oh, yeah protozoan. algae we can talk about algae as well now see the figure here protozoa okay so this amoeba which we were discussing about which is the single uh, single cell organism okay that is that actually falls in the category of protozoa okay another example of a protozoa is a paramecium okay so what criteria are used to categorize microorganisms under this under protozoa let's have a look at that okay so we were talking about protozoa or they are also called protozoans right yes sir now you see protozoans they are basically a group of single cell microorganisms okay and they are classified as animals or plants they are classified as animals not plants so wherever you will see that protozoans 
they are formed in a group okay although individually they are of single cell only but they will exist in groups there will be other protozoans also okay so we okay. say that protozoa are a group of single celled microorganisms right no yes protozoa are like you see some animals protozoa are just animal like like as you see algae algae how they exist in groups they exist in groups okay so protozoa also exist in groups and where can you found uh, protozoa you can found them in ponds in dirty water in drain water okay or in damp soil also you can found certain pro uh, protozoa what are the some examples of protozoa amoeba paramecium plasmodium these are some examples of protozoa which are going to discuss about okay so some examples of protozoa are what are they amoeba okay and in the antarctic Amoe text another example given here is paramecium right paramecium okay sir paramecium this one more if you like you can remember that is the plasmodium that is plasmodium, plasmodium. okay and uh, you see if we were to talk about the diseases which are spread by protozoa you see the malaria virus malaria which is caused malaria. by right protozoa is caused by mosquito that is also caused by a protozoa and the name of that protozoa is you know what out of these three which one is the protozoa which causes malaria that is actually plasmodium the third one okay so plasmodium oh. is a protozoa that is responsible for causing malaria okay remember this thing here okay now that's all about uh, protozoa now next in line we have to discuss about algae okay so how to define this algae what are algae algae are you must have seen figures of algae okay okay do tell me are they autotrophic or heterotrophic in nature yes amit algae yes, yes. are autotroph they are autotroph what is the reason for them uh, uh, why are they autotroph because they are usually found in because they contain chlorophyll in them right okay we will come to that in a minute so first talk about what are algae actually you see algae they are basically a simply group of uh, simple plant like organisms algae are what they are large okay. group of simple plant like organism so wherever you will find uh, found algae it does spread over a large area okay and it is always found in area which is wet algae are a group of what a group of simple plant like organism simple plant like organisms okay another thing is that they are autotrophic in nature they are autotrophic in nature why they are autotrophic because they contain chlorophyll so hence they can perform photosynthesis right yes sir they contain mm -hmm. chlorophyll and hence can perform what photosynthesis right now however there is a difference between algae and plant 
can you spot the difference between algae and plant what is the difference between an algae and a plant um just stress a little bit the answer is very simple difference between an uh, difference seedling. between an algae and and a plant yes ahmed root root seeds and very good leaves they basically lack roots stems and leaves these are not found in algae okay they differ from plants since they lack stem roots and leaves right now what are some common examples of algae let's have a look at that so some of the common examples of algae are clamidomonas clamai domonas okay and one more example is spirogyra so remember the names remember all the examples which i have given you so far of alga of viruses and bacteria so examples are very important okay so have a look at alga here the diagram of algae here see this one clamidomonas and spirogyra these are examples of what algae okay algae okay uh do um, you see are algae known to spread diseases can they spread disease or are they harmful for nature uh no sir what about the algae which grows on a water body is it good for the aquatic life there will it not hamper the aquatic life there will it not hamper fishes and aquatic plant um, it hampers their growth you see the sunlight yes. sunlight which should be reaching the base of the water body okay which is very essential for you see aquatic plants also does photosynthesis okay so aquatic plants also does photosynthesis now since there is an alga grown over the water so the sunlight will be obstructed hence the aquatic plant will not be receiving enough sunlight so they will also start to die and you see there are so many fishes that uh, survive by eating those algae uh, those aquatic plants so if the plant is not there hence the fishes will also die okay and this alga what it does let's say this is your water body growing here this is your water body over here okay yeah let's say this is your water water body here okay and there's an alga growing over on top of the water body for well, the fishes or the aquatic life which is inside this water body they are all going to die one more reason for that is because this alga utilizes all the mixed oxygen in the water utilizes mixed oxygen in water okay so hence the fishes which breathe by their gill they will not be getting sufficient amount of oxygen so due to that also those fishes are going to die okay and they have made a layer over the water body hence sunlight will not be reaching the bottom of the uh, of that water body where the aquatic plants are present so they will not be able to perform photosynthesis okay so in that way algae are not good for our ecosystem right amit yes sir okay now this yes, is sir. special type of algae that is called blue green algae or cyanobacteria okay so let me discuss with the, uh, discuss that also and then we will conclude the class okay there's an algae called blue green algae okay or another name of this algae is actually cyanobacteria so blue green algae or cyanobacteria c y a n o cyanobacteria okay 
that can fix atmospheric nitrogen into the what into the they have ability to fix the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil fix atmospheric nitrogen so remember this fact here okay so that they can fix the atmospheric nitrogen into the medium in which they survive okay okay amit so far we have discussed four groups of microorganisms here which one is remaining here fungi oh uh, yes fungi and by by have we we discussed yeah only fungi only is remaining here okay so read about yes. fungi and read about all what we have discussed in today's class okay have a look at the diagram of virus here this is how the virus looks here okay if you were to uh, see a more better picture of this see this one this virus here that is similar to the figure given in the ncrt okay okay sir okay now do tell me about two diseases caused by bacteria what are the diseases caused by bacteria list give at least two examples of disease caused by bacteria two disease caused by bacteria is um the yeah you start fever i forgot what um ahmed for this chapter for the previous chapter have you taken notes of the class yes, the previous sir. chapter which we did have you taken notes of the things which we discussed yes sir okay so for this chapter also you are going to take notes in your copy okay so yes, starting from sir, uh, yeah as a whole bacteria cough and cold yes no only yes. cough 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 is caused by bacteria other examples are cholera and typhoid and tuberculosis those are other examples right okay so from starting from here first you will note down the content this thing in your notebook and then you will start from here whatever i have written here you need to take note of it in your copy okay yes sir okay so that you will be able to keep track of what 